Hi, this is Steve Lentini, and I'm your host for the podcast, Different Thinking for Different Times. Season 3, Episode 31. Let me start. I'd like to start with a quote from Ernest Holmes. We are not downtrodden, depraved, and miserable sinners, born in sin, and conceived in iniquity and shame, some to go to heaven and some to hell, and all to the eternal glory of God, like God revels in our misery. This is a lie, Ernest Holmes goes on to say. It always was and always will be. Now, I don't know if he had a near-death experience like I did, And I can tell you that that is not the experience that I had, which is why I'm sharing this podcast. Leaving my body one second into what's next, because there is a what's next. And and the small-minded human thinking for eons has been manipulated and managed through fear and sin and religion and following some kind of a routine to be loved by God, to get admittance (laughs) in the infinite. So first of all, we're in it. We're in the infinite. But because of our small-minded brain, our egoic hubris, We are like ants next to a bridge abutment. They don't even know they're living next to a bridge. And they don't know they're next to a bridge abutment. They're just going about their daily lives, right? Instinct, finding food, clearing out their home, making other ants, etc. Well, we're the same thing when it comes to the universe, the infinite. We've concluded, passed on by stories and myths and and even uh, manipulated through the thousands of years with small-minded thinking, and we believe it and we blindly follow it. And it's time, really, for humanity to realize what it means to live in a universe in something infinite. What it means is humans have some hubris and laugh at the fact that we are literally ants next to a bridge abutment. We have no idea how amazing this miracle is that we live in. And we have heard it from many others who have had near-death experiences, that it's nothing, nothing like what we've been told. As I said, one second, I was in intensive care on November 18th, 2002, and the next second, one with everything and nothing. And nothing from here goes with us into what's next. No small-minded thinking. You know, we have people who rail against the sexes. One sex makes the other wrong. Doesn't matter which. People are made wrong by small-minded thinking for their sexual preferences, their choice of life partners, their political parties, their nationalities, the color of their skin, all craziness, all small-minded thinking. And that's our goal is to overcome all that small-minded thinking. After all, we're all one. We're a human race. Yes, we have biological differences, But to make anyone wrong for their biological differences, how crazy is that, right? That's what Eckhart Tolle says. Some people think reality is nuts. (laughs) I chuckle when I hear that. So to look at your life where you're blindly following anyone, where you're railing against people because they have a different view than you, it matters not to me what view you have. It's okay. You're entitled to a view but not to the point where you're unwilling to compromise or consider moving somewhat to blindly follow anything makes so many others wrong. And we can see all the times in society where 
despicable people, leaders, I can name a few, but you can think of them yourselves, where people followed them blindly, the masses, and it led to genocide and mass deaths and killing people because they did not agree with the mainstream. And that's occurring today in many ways, and we're, we're not questioning it. That astounds me with how small-minded it is, and we don't even see our small-mindedness because we believe it. We gather proof to prove our own assumptions are true. We gather evidence to prove whatever we believe is true. And it's very small-minded. And I'm just encouraging people to look at all the places you're small-minded because you're not mirroring what I experienced in the infinite. Again, I was one with everything and nothing. One second in my body, the next one with everything and nothing. Nobody. And then there was a life review and only the good I had done flashed before me. All the lives I had touched which makes sense to me now back in my body. And as soon as I got back in my body in intensive care, I was blown away by it because I realized how much good I had done and why I felt so good when I did good. How do you feel when you do good? Imagine if we all got over ourselves, our small-minded thinking. As I say in my book, you might be full of shit if... Have a sense of humor about yourself and that your life is your business. Your journey is your business. Everyone else's is none of your business. Now, can you make a difference in this world? Yes. I encourage people to step up and do what they believe in, but not so blindly that they make many, many others wrong. I mean, Look what our politicians have been modeling for years, just railing against each other. Doesn't matter the party. No one really knows where the truth is now because their goal is just to get elected, stay in power so they can benefit their families, which is why they do it. Why else do they spend millions to get elected? They benefit their families. They leverage their offices. And while it's legal, it's out of integrity but they enrich themselves and that's okay. That's okay. Until we decide as a society that we'd like something better. We'd like people not to be so small minded. We would want people to engage in compromise. Let me hear what you're thinking. I'll share with you what I'm thinking and I'm willing to negotiate. I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to consider it. I might ask you, by the way, if you come as a guest on my show, on the podcast, does that sound like small-minded thinking? If it sounds small-minded, and we see so much evidence of it. I mean, journalism is no longer journalism for most of the mainstream media. It's all commentary, and they invite people that agree with them. It's so small-minded that we... Can't even see it. We can't see the small-minded bridge abutment, let alone the bridge that we're tearing down. We're one race. We're a human race. We're one group of beings that could have a goal, a united goal, to leave everyone and everything a little better than we find them and to disagree politely and leave an opening, right? Narrow-mindedness is small-mindedness. Narrow-minded is not what made this infinite existence. I mean, we, of course, only judge our existence on what we see here every day, and now we're seeing a much bigger picture by those that travel in space, and yet we only see a little tiny glimpse of the infinite. We We call it the infinite, a universe to give it definition. We need definitions. That's how small-minded our brains are. 
and the brightest among us are just as small minded. They maybe have a little higher IQ, but their emotional quotient often is lacking if they're small minded, if they're narrow minded. I thought the purpose of a higher education was to expand narrow-minded thinking into open-minded thinking. And even in our universities today and colleges, we see examples of teaching narrow-mindedness, disallowing people to think differently. So that's why I do this podcast, to enroll, even if it's one person with every recording, into getting over themselves, expanding into limitless thinking and giving up and leaving behind small-minded, narrow-minded, limited thinking. And to do good and to leave this existence, everyone and everything a little better than we find them, in a positive way. There's positive ways to achieve a higher thinking society and consciousness. And so this is my contribution. I certainly don't do it for the money. It's been three years. I think I've generated $25 in three years. I don't look at it for the money. I look at it as informing people about what's next and that it's unlimited. It's infinite, just like The consciousness mirrors the infinite universe that we live in. We're surrounded by the infinite. So take a second and just reflect on the idea that besides living in a universe, you could be in a universal and infinite resident by challenging your own thinking. And that's your job. Your job is not my life or anyone else's life. As I said, our journeys are as different and unique as a fingerprint. And there's a purpose for it. The people that bother us, when we lack acceptance of others or we're intolerant of another views, another's view, it's funny how often I see different sides accusing one side of intolerance, and yet they use the same tactics. They're intolerant. Sometimes the intolerance that you see is reflecting back to you your own intolerance, your own small-minded thinking. If you reject any others, that's narrow-minded, small-minded. But consider it. Prove it to yourself that you can live happier, a fuller life, doing good, allowing others their points of view, allowing others their journey, and managing your journey. And go out and see if you can make a difference. Leave everything and everyone a little better than you find them. And see if that makes a difference in the world. But more importantly, prove to yourself it'll make a difference in your own life. Thanks. Any questions? Steve at stevelentini.com. Steve at Steve L is in Linda. E-N is in Nancy. T is in Tom, I Glad to have you as a guest. And November 1 premiering is my new podcast, which I will do in addition to different thinking for different times, where I have conversations with people about where we're all full of shit. And we have a laugh about society and we get over ourselves. Any questions, again, steve at stevelentini.com. And if you want to come on the show, I'm glad to have you. Remember, I might ask you, does that sound like small-minded thinking? Thanks.